Hello friends, welcome to the US CPA program. My name is Siddharth Chaudhary. I'm a qualified chartered accountant, a CPA, and a certified IFRS professional. I've conducted workshops and trainings covering thousands of professionals across industries, right from analyst level to senior management. I worked with one of the big fours and then with a Fortune 100 company in India before moving to their headquarters at New York. I will be your instructor for the financial accounting and reporting section of the CPA program. Welcome to the course. In this video, I'm going to give you an understanding of the exam, discuss the content allocation of financial accounting and reporting. And finally, we will discuss a small topic from financial accounting and reporting just to get you started on this journey called CPA. Understanding the exam, one of my colleagues would have taken you through this slide uh, in another video. I want to draw your attention to row number three in the table, which is financial accounting and reporting. It's a four hour exam divided into 66 multiple choice questions and eight task based simulations. If you look at the score weightage, it is divided into 50% for MCQs and 50% for task based simulations which basically means that 66 questions will fetch you 50% and the eight TBSS will fetch you the remaining 50%. Content, I'm referring to the top right section of the slide. The last row, remembering and understanding is just 10 to 20%. That means this exam is not about memorization. It is more on application of knowledge, which is 50 to 60%, and finally on analysis, 25 to 35%. Therefore, my focus also will be more on the application and analysis part than the memorization part. And my endeavor would be not only to take you through the theoretical concepts, but also relate them to practical examples so that you are fully prepared for the exam, whether it is in terms of MCQs, or task-based simulations. The content, it has conceptual framework, and we are referring to US GAAP here, uh, standard setting and financial reporting. There is very little percentage of IFRS that comes in the exam, but it is mostly US GAAP, 90 to 95% US GAAP. Select financial statement accounts, select transactions, and state and local governments. All right, now that we have discussed the content allocation and the weightage, let's get into the topic, which is loss contingencies. Now, before I get into the slides, let me give you a very simple example from day-to-day -day life. Imagine you are driving on the highway at 65 miles an hour. The speed limit is 60 miles an hour. Now, whether you are driving deliberately at 65 or unknowingly you have crossed the speed limit, the fact is that you have crossed the legal limit. Therefore, a condition exists. Now, you're driving and after a little while, you notice a police car behind you. It is not right behind you, but it is at a certain distance. But the fact that a police car is around you gets you a little worried. Now, in your mind, you will make an assessment as to whether this police car is chasing you or it is going on some other mission like catching a thief or chasing another high speeding car. Now, when you make this assessment, you will divide your assessment into three categories. And based on that assessment, you will decide the future course of action. So category one, you think that there is a remote chance that this police car is chasing you because 65 is hardly any speed. They may not even have noticed it. Now, if that is your assessment, you will not do anything about it. You will ignore the police car, continue your driving. 
at best you will reduce your speed to 60 or below 60 so that you don't get into trouble in the future category 2 you think that it is reasonably possible that they are chasing you because whether it is 65 or 70 or 75 you have crossed the limit over speeding is over speeding therefore there is a reasonable possibility that this police car is chasing you now if that is your assessment then you will make a disclosure in the notes to financial statements well not in the car case but just try to register those terms in your mind remote ignore reasonable possibility make a disclosure in the financial statements and finally category three if you think that it is probable that means it is likely that they are actually chasing you then you will record a liability in the books and also make a disclosure in the notes now the obvious question that comes to mind is at what amount should we book the liability or make the disclosure the answer to that is very simple your best estimate that means if you have a figure in mind if you think that they are going to give you a hundred dollar ticket as a fine then you will record the liability at hundred dollars but if you don't have an exact number in mind and you have a range that it could be anywhere between hundred to two hundred dollars then you need to find or estimate a best figure in that range so let's say you think that it, it could be anywhere between 100 to 200 dollars but my best guess is 120 so in that case you will record the liability at 120 but in the notes you will make a disclosure of the entire range and finally if you have a range in mind but you don't have a best estimate within the range then you will go with the minimum value of the range which is hundred dollars in this example now this example might help you in understanding the concept of contingencies the difference here is that here the uncertainty got resolved or will get resolved in five to ten minutes you will know whether the police car was actually chasing you or was it going on some other work but in the accounting world uncertainties don't get resolved so quickly it may take weeks months and sometimes years therefore at every balance sheet date you will have to make an assessment as to whether your loss contingencies are remote reasonably possible or probable and then based on that you will take the next course of action which is ignore make a disclosure or record and also make a disclosure all right now that you have understood the basic concept of contingency let me also spend two minutes in explaining why this is a very important number in the financial statements believe it or not loss contingencies can influence potentially influence the stock price of the company yes you heard me right loss contingencies can potentially influence the stock price of your company and generally they tend to have an inverse relationship which means if your contingent liabilities or loss contingencies grow keep growing the stock price of your company will start declining there are reports available on this there are there's research there's data available on this you can also google search it economic times came with a report in 2018 giving a list of companies whose contingent liabilities had drastically decreased and consequently the stock prices of those companies had dramatically increased thereby establishing a linkage between these two aspects of course stock price is dependent on multiple variables but this is one more variable which cannot be ignored now look at this balance sheet first of all Notice that the assets are on the left and liabilities and stockholders' equity is on the right because that's how in US they write the balance sheet. Now, notice this balance sheet. It has assets of $1 million, liabilities of $550,000 and stockholders' equity of $450,000. Now, in the notes, there is a loss contingency of $400,000. Uh, $400, what does this tell you? 
if this loss contingency gets converted to a liability, it has the potential of sweeping your current assets and investments and, and also part of your property plant and equipment. You will have to sell those assets to pay off this liability. Or you might have to issue further shares. You have to raise capital, which means either if you go to the existing shareholders, then you are basically asking them to bail out the company from this situation. And if you're going to new shareholders, then you're effectively diluting the ownership of the existing shareholders. Either way, it's not a good news. The third option with you is you raise a debt, you take a loan to pay off this liability. So basically you're replacing a liability with another liability. It doesn't help much. So all in all, contingencies, loss contingencies in particular, are carefully scrutinized, closely watched by all the stakeholders. And as you can also observe that it is not a good number to have on the balance sheet in, uh, in the financial statements. Therefore, managements of companies may have a tendency to under report this number. Therefore, auditors must exercise professional skepticism and design their audit procedures, test of controls, test of details around this number very, very carefully. Now let's talk about what this really means, the definition as per FASB accounting standard codification. It defines a loss contingency as an existing condition. You have already exceeded the limit, so the condition already exists. An existing condition, situation or set of circumstances involving uncertainty. The condition exists, but there is an uncertainty regarding whether that police car is chasing you or it's just going on its own. Now, there is an uh, uncertainty as to possible loss that will ultimately be resolved when one or more future events occur. That is, the police car stops you or fails to occur, the police car goes past you. So the key words in this definition are existing. The condition is existing. Uncertainty, there's an uncertainty regarding the loss. And finally, it will be resolved when future events occur or fail to occur. Examples of contingencies, pending threatened litigation. Somebody has filed a case against your company. And right now, you don't know whether you'll win the case or lose the case, whether the chances are remote, reasonably possible or probable. Similarly, actual or possible claims and assessments, threat of act expropriation of assets, guarantees of indebtedness of others. There are multiple examples like this. This is just an illustrative list. Recognition, look at the third bullet. GAP provides that loss contingencies should be recognized in the books. That means you'll pass a journal entry, debit expense credit liability, only if both the following conditions are satisfied. That is, number one, it is probable, it is likely, and the amount of loss can be reasonably estimated or reliably estimated. If these conditions are not met, both of them, then you will not record it. How do you measure? We have already spoken about it. You take the best estimate. In case of a range, you take the best estimate within the range. And in case no amount in the range is a better estimate than any other amount in the range, then you take the minimum value in the range. And finally, in the notes, you give the entire range. Presentation and disclosure. Remember, the more you disclose, the better. But do not repeat any information and do not project good items. That's the key rule or thumb rule behind this. And of course, in specific instances, you will have different items to disclose. Nature of the contingency, the amount of the accrual, the description that the, that the accrual is, is an estimate. Uh, in case of reasonable possible, uh, reasonably possible loss contingency, an estimate of the possible loss. In case of a range, the range of loss. 
if the amount cannot be reasonably estimated a statement to that effect all right so we have spoken about the recognition criteria probable and can be reasonably estimated the measurement criteria the best estimate in case of a range the best estimate within the range in case of a range without any best estimate within the range the minimum value of the range in the notes give the entire range we have also spoken about the presentation and disclosure now let's go to some questions a customer filed a case against your company due to a product defect company's attorney's estimate that a loss is probable now this is the keyword here in the amount of 200000 that means the amount can also be reasonably estimated or reliably estimated answer record a liability of 200000 a customer filed a case against your company due to a product defect company's attorney's estimate that a loss is probable in the range of 200 to 450000 and the best estimate is 250000 what is the answer yes record a liability of 250000 but in the notes give the entire range customer file a case against your company due to a product defect company's attorney's estimate that a loss is probable in the range of 200 to 450000 no amount in the range is a better estimate than any other amount in the range in that case you take the minimum value in the range which is 200000 but in the notes you will give the entire range and finally an employee of abc inc files a case against the company for injuries suffered during course of employment. ABC has an insurance policy against this claim. ABC's attorney's estimate that a loss is probable in the range of 200 to 450,000, and no amount in the range is a better estimate than any other amount in the range. ABC expects to receive the insurance claim in the next financial year. Now, here, since it is probable and you have a range, you will record a liability, and in the notes, you will give the entire range. You will not record the receivable with respect to the insurance because you have not yet realized it. Recording a gain without realizing it would be against the principles of conservatism. Therefore, you will just record the liability, not record the receivable. All right. I hope you enjoyed and you learned the concepts of contingencies. I hope to see you in all the lectures of financial accounting and reporting. Happy learning.